Y'all might remember old Dumas here. I rescued him from his grave a few weeks ago. You also might remember that right before I decided to drive him out, well, he started running like garbage. Let's see if we can't figure out what's wrong with him. It's been bugging me ever since we brought this thing home. Why in the world it started running like garbage all of a sudden? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be carburetor issues. So, well, if you remember the F600 from a couple of weeks ago, how it pretty much did the same thing. Swapped the carb, it run like brand new. So that's what we're going to do here with Dumas. I'm going to take that same carb and put it on here. And uh, let's just see if the thing will run halfway decent. All righty, let's get the old carburetor off of here. We got the Harry because they're calling for rain in a couple of hours. And I'd like to get it running and uh, get it in the garage because there's some more stuff that I would like to check out. Remember how it's, you know, sort of lost oil pressure, got pretty loud. Well, I'd like to figure that out too because the motor, I'm telling you, it ran good until that carburetor started acting up. Let's see. What else do we need to take off? I reckon that's it other than four bolts. Well, pretty doggone simple. Come off of there, you son of a gun. I'll tell you what I wish that the weather would be about like this all the time. It's about, I don't know, 60 degrees. It just feels wonderful today. All right, here's the trusty old car roster that I put on uh, the F600. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, that this is the issue. This is a rough old carburetor right here. The air horn here is broke off. I had to straighten out the choke flapper. She's in rough shape, but I tell you what, it ran out of F600 pretty doggone good. Where do you go, little buddy? Hmm. Well. We have an issue, um, huh, well, it appears that my throttle linkage ain't gonna hook up, so this is sort of aggravating. Um, may, uh, may have to just idle it up real high, you know, to get it to the garage if this fixes it. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Well, I reckon that's it, other than filling it up with gasolines, and, uh, see, oh, I gotta get a battery. Let's see if it'll fire it up. Here's my fancy new little squirt bottles that uh, Super Lady, I believe it was, sent me. Awful handy. Oh, well, darn. We're, we're already full. Okay. That didn't take much, did it? I don't recall. I think it goes this way. Oh, my goodness, does it go this way? Mm. Yes. Yes, it does. I tell you what, my wire going down to my star tar. Looks pretty bad. <laughs> pretty bare. All right, I'm going to go in there and get in it and. Uh, Let's just see if it'll start. Let me give it a pump or two first. There we go. Oh, tell you what, I'm gonna idle it up a little bit too. Cause I don't really know where this is set. We'll try it right there. Fire in the hole. Maybe not. I don't know why it honks the horn when there's a bad connection. That's funny though. Fire in the hole again. I don't think this battery's dead, but it very well could be. Oh, you know what? I remember now. Bad connection over here where it bolts to the to the uh, whatever that's called. Let's try that now. Fire in the hole for the third time. Let's try it again. Hmm. 
Let me give her a little, a little help again. We'll give her a little choke too. How about that? Well, how's it? Yeah, there we go. About approximately right there. I guess we got our answer. It's the carburetor on this one right here too. Um, tell you what, it's, well, it's gonna rain like I said. I winterized this a while back. And by that, I mean, I believe there was a plug over here I pulled out of the block. They had a pet cock over here, opened it, took the bottom radiator hose off, drained all the water out. So, let me get that unwinterized, put some watt tie in it, and we'll drive this thing to the garage in the Oh yeah, I like that a lot. It, uh, yes, it runs much better. Anyway, let me get that stuff done. Well, I do believe we have an issue with the fuel system. Uh, it's pouring gas out of the canister there. I just stuck my hand up there and uh, the gasket has popped out. I don't know how it did that. Anyway, let me remedy that before we set the whole truck on fire and all my yard and burn my house down and all that. Well, here's the old gasket. It ain't in too good shape right there. I don't know how in the world that ever sealed. Got holes in it and it was popped out the side, just like that, just like that right there. Anyway, let me see if I can find one. Fellers, this right here is why you keep old parts. Remember the F600, how I had to buy a new fuel pump? But I told you I was gonna keep that canister. Well, look here, I got me a gasket too. Let's go put it on. All right, I got the gasket on my uh, fuel canister down there. Hopefully that'll fix that leak. And, well, there's two issues. I got a flat tar. That ain't good. Plus, I got to take this off anyway to get to that uh, plug in the block. So let me get it jacked up and get the wheel off, get the plug on, get the tire fixed, get the tire back on. We'll hit the garage. Hopefully before it rains. spankingly new Milwaukee impact gun a couple weeks ago. Pretty doggone good. It's a lot more powerful than that uh, Ingersoll Wren. Alright. This shouldn't be too bad, but you know how things go when I think it's going to be easy. Well, no. No siree. Well, to get him started. These old wheels, they were pretty doggone bad. Uh, I cleaned them up with a brush pretty good. And uh, you can see where he used bead sealer on the back side. That's probably where it's leaking, right in that area. So, I'm going to do the next best thing. I'm going to put me some old fixie flat in it. See if that'll stop some of the leak or at least slow it down. <laughs> yeah, it's leaking all over the place on the back side around the bead. Pretty doggone bad. Ooh, we got the hairy. Y'all hear the thunder? Well, the fix flat. <laughs> it didn't fix nothing. Uh, I probably should have got some slime, but oh well. I'm filling my little air tank up here. Hopefully, we can get it pumped up enough to get it in the garage here. Speaking of garages. I actually cleaned up a little bit. I know it still, you know, looks pretty messy, but at least I can get a vehicle in here now. Uh, I actually rented a storage unit and hauled three loads over there to it. So yeah, I believe we can get a truck in here now. I gotta get that out of the way and I believe we can get that truck in here. The rain is upon us. 
that tire won't pump up with weight on it so i gotta jack it back up see if it'll pump up hopefully it'll hold air long enough to get it to the garage maybe we can get this done before the downpour starts well i'm standing out in the pouring rain i guess my mama didn't raise me no better than to <laughs> come in out of the rain uh i got the tire pumped up though got it fired up got some water in it but listen to this it ain't doing no clickety clacking it's got oil pressure now somebody explain it to me <laughs> anyway let's get it in the garage and i don't know we'll do something to it well we had oil pressure but it's quickly going away so we're gonna have to do something about that uh, let's get this thing in the garage if you're wondering why it's idled upside well i ain't got no gas pedal i'm gonna have to get a running start at this little hill i reckon brakes still work good though <laughs> Here we go. Hope ain't no cars coming. Well, we got her in the garage, and that's a good thing because, well, I ain't working out in the rain. I ain't working out in the cold. Bad news is, well, I'm right up here on my fiery dragon, so probably won't be running it. I'm going to have to find a different heat source. Um, I'm very, very glad that that carburetor right there took care of the idling and running issue. I mean, it just sits there and purrs like a kitten with that on there. Well, here's the old one. Let me just show you what I think might be going on. Probably can't see it, but there's quite a bit of play in that shaft right there but still i just don't think it's enough to cause it to run like that unless these old fords are real sensitive to that well you know last week on my four wheel drive i left a vacuum port completely unplugged <laughs> and it was sit there and idle just wherever i wanted to i could idle it way down way up and i don't know i just don't understand that but anyway i'll probably Put bushings in this car roster at some time might do it here in a little while i don't know but uh right now i'm concerned about the oil pressure it, it don't make sense why i had earl pressure when i first fired it up and then just disappeared um there's a few things it could be the uh oil pump drive shaft you know it could be slipping i guess but seemed like it'd be making noise pickup tube could be uh stopped up in the oil pan the oil pump itself you know, could be going bad. I don't know. Um, this is what I'm going to do. I cheated a little bit and studied on this online about how to get the oil pan off and get to the pickup tube and all that. And well, what they do is they take both motor mounts loose and uh, they'll put a jack right under the uh, balancer there, jack it up, and then put wood blocks under each motor mount so you can get that jack out of the way and then you unloosen the uh, oil pan and drop it out of the way. So that's what we're going to do. So let me go get the jack, jack stands and all that good stuff and we'll get started on that I reckon. Well, I got her jacked up. I'm up under here surveying the situation. I'm not completely convinced that we got to jack that motor up. Well, if you look, you see how far that sump goes. I mean, that's pretty good ways. And, well, we got that much clearance. Well, probably got an inch more if I knock that grease off to drop this down below the balancer here. So I think what I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to knock this two inches of grease dirt off so I can get to the bolts. Then I'll get the bolts out. And uh, let's just see what thing will come out without jacking the motor up. Well, this is just a wee bit ridiculous right here. Good gracious. Let me see if I can get a couple of inches of clearance right here under it. Goodness gracious. This is ridiculous. Very, very ridiculous here. Oh yeah, 
I gained quite a bit of clearance right there. <laughs> cool. Well, y'all ain't gonna believe me unless I show you, but I have never in my life seen the likes of dirt and grease just caked on the motor. Look right here in the bell housing. I mean, it's it's an inch thick. What's this over here? Just look at that. What in the devil? Also, and oh, by the way, let me see if I can get y'all up in there. There's a freeze plug. See it right there? Well, it's, it is a plug. And it's wet. I thought it was leaking. Thought it was water. Oh, no. That's oil. So, I'm not real sure where it's coming from. I don't know if it's head gasket, valve cover. But this entire motor is just, well, like I said, I've never seen one this bad. But I guess being on a farm, dusty farm, for years and years will make it do this. So, I'm going to clean on it for a little bit. I'm going to get all this stuff out. And then... Uh, then we'll work on getting that uh, oil pan loose. But I just wanted y'all to see this. It's pretty disgusting. Well, there's about 25% of it. <laughs> Here's my boot for reference. That's quite a bit of dirt and grease coming out of a truck. Anyway, let me get this cleaned up, and then we'll get the bolts out of the oil pan. Well, I went ahead and pulled the radiator out because, you know, it's got a leak in it pretty bad and kept dripping on me whilst I was under the truck. And <laughs> that was really getting on my nerves, so I pulled it out. And, of course, you know, water went all over the floor. But <laughs> don't worry. I got plenty of holes and cracks in this floor. It just went right through it. But I'm going to give it a little time, let this dry up a little bit so my cardboard don't get soaking wet. And I'm going to go take a break. And then I'll be back. Hopefully, we can get that oil pan off. All right, I just got the Earl's drain out of the pan. So let's go ahead and get these uh, bolts out of this oil pan. I have a stray cat, been around for a couple months. <laughs> I, can, I can hear that crazy thing hollering outside. Uh, she gets under the house, so she's got somewhere warm to get. But for whatever reason, it's raining and hailing out there right now. And for whatever reason, she wants to be out in it. I hear her out there hollering. What a dummy. I told you I bought that uh, Milwaukee, what do you call it, Impact? Well, I got this too. It was a deal. This, the Impact, battery charger, and of course, a battery for each. And it wasn't my $200. I thought that was a pretty good deal, so I went in and got it. At Home Depot. How many more bulls are there than the son of a gun? All right, I gotta go around back and get them. I'll be back when I get all the bolts out. All right, I got all the bolts out. So let's go to whooping on it with a big old hummer. See if we can get this broke loose. Well, that was pretty doggone easy right there. Interesting. Hmm. And that's all the movement I got. So that's good. <laughs> well, I reckon it's time to break the motor mounts loose. And uh, jack that motor up. Dad blame it. I was hoping we didn't have to. All right. Well, let's do that then. All right. I don't know how well y'all can see. But let's get these motor mounts broke loose. Oh, yeah. Let's get this thing jacked up. All right. There's one of them gone. Let me get the other real quick. Spinny, spin, spin around. Where you at? Where you at, buddy? Oh, that's tight. That's really, really tight. Goodness gracious. Ooh. I go. I'll be back. I'll get this done. I think I kicked y'all. Sorry. All right, I got both motor mounts loose, and I'll just look in the truck over, and <laughs> I see some weight reduction right here. Pretty bad right in this area here. Uh, a little bit over here. She's starting to look like lockjaw. Uh, well, not really. I've never seen anything like lockjaw. That's the rustiest vehicle that's ever been, I believe. Anyway, let's get this thing jacked up. All right, I have procured the necessary items, I do believe. So, what we're going to do, put this right here under that harmonic dampener. 
jack it up till I hear crunching. <laughs> then I'll stop and I'll get out and look and see what we're hitting. And maybe that'll be enough. Oh yeah, she's coming on up. Oh, I think it may be trying to fall on me. Um, yeah, let me reposition my 4 before. This ain't real safe. Uh, do not try this at home. You know how my warning at the beginning of my videos? There's a reason I have that. And it's uh, it's not to copycat somebody else that some of y'all think I'm doing. <laughs> that is to, you know, tell you, hey, I'm an idiot. Don't do what I do. So anyway, I hear a little bit of crunching. But we're going to keep on going a little bit more. Let me get up here and look just to make sure. Transmission might be hitting the floorboard. Um, let me see what I think about the situation over here. Can I get some wood in here? Not quite yet. So let's go a little higher. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she's going on up. Will it go? Watch your fingers, watch your fingers. Let's go up a little bit more. <laughs> Still won't quite go. Darn it. Well, darn you. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Little buddy, don't fall. I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand. I already got one in. I think I can get some in the other side. Sorry, fella, but I got to move, y'all. Excuse me. Excuse me, sirs. Well, I got it jacked up, and you can see I got my blocks of wood in there. Uh, I had to swap jacks out. That's a dang old uh, Harbor Freight racing jack, aluminum racing jack. And here lately, it's been, well, okay, you just fall down. Anyway, it's been leaking down here lately, so I've either got to try to find a rebuild kit or chuck it in the garbage. Anyway, uh, I think we're ready to pull this thing out, so let me set y'all down, and we'll yank her out. Whew. <laughs> All right. Come on out, little buddy. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Now, let me get my fleece leaked. Well, let's get this light. And let's see. Oh, yeah. She ain't completely stopped up, but it's pretty doggone bad. Tell you what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and pull this pump off. And we'll look at that pickup tube and all that. And decide what we're going to do. What size are you, little buddy? Yes, sir. I always guess the size wrong. Ned, blame it. Tired of getting up and down. Woo. In case you want to know, that is a 916 bolt head. Now what has happened? Well, this is good. <laughs> I've gotten this sucker stuck on here. <laughs> All right, there it goes. Only I could do something like that, I swear. I ain't even kidding you. Only me. Oh, yeah. Ta-da! All right, let's slide this out and have a look-see at it. All right, here it is. Um, as you can see, the pickup is a wee bit stopped up right there, but only half of it, this half right here, is not. But I don't know how bad it is under this, and the tube itself may be completely stopped up. I don't know. What we're going to do is well, I'm going to get it out of here and clean it up, take it loose from the oil pump, and we'll just see if it's stopped up or not. And good gracious alive, that is just disgusting down in there. we got to clean the oil pan up, that's for sure. Let me get this part and we'll look at it. All right, I got the pickup off the oil pump, and I smashed her on the table like that right there, and it's, it's still crap coming out of it. Uh, but you know what that is, don't you? Remember? When I first started on this thing, it didn't have no distributor in it. And, you know, I pulled out just all kind of garbage out of that hole. Well, that's what this is. There's even a piece of acorn in here I saw. Yeah, that is a piece of acorn. 
right there. Uh, so that's what's caused this. Um, anyway, I took the oil pump apart, took the plate off of it anyway. It looks like brand new and it ain't stopped up or anything. But taking that pickup off, I broke a bolt in it. So I'm going to get a new oil pump anyway. You know, might as well. Got it tore apart. I'm going to clean this up. Now, I want you to look at this right here because this is absolutely amazing. This is literally an inch thick. Just look at that. What in the devil is going on? I'm going to clean this out for sure. <laughs> but I don't know. You know, like I said, only half of that pickup screen was stopped up. But this may have been smashed down in here. And if it's smashed in that, it ain't going to pick up a whole lot of oil. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure this is the issue. So we're going to get a new oil pump. We'll clean this out. Make sure this is cleaned out. And we'll put her back together. All right, I got the camera off set up. Because <laughs> I want y'all to see what I pull out of here. Just look at that. What the devil? Oh, hey. Wow. Yeah, that's probably, <laughs> that's probably the worst old man I have ever come across in me. Pretty doggone bad. All right, that's about all I can get out of it. Um, tomorrow, it's doesn't got dark now, raining. Tomorrow we'll clean it up good, hit it with some purple power, get all that old gasket off, and uh, well, just look at that right there. <laughs> good gracious. Anyway, I'll get that cleaned up, and I'm fixing to get under there and uh, scrape all the old gasket off the motor. And, uh, well, right now I'm going to get on the interwebs and order uh, oil pump, gasket, and whatever else I need. So I'll have it in the morning, and we'll put this thing back together. Hopefully we'll have oil pressure. Well, it's the next day. I'm up under the truck cleaning off this uh, gasket surface for the oil pan. And upon further inspection, I mean, y'all probably can't see it, but up in here is the time to change. Ooh, let me tell you, pretty bad. Pretty, pretty bad. It's almost as bad as dudes was if you remember it was on the verge of skipping a tooth so uh you know i saw that last night so i went ahead and ordered a timing chain set and so uh as soon as i get out from under here we're gonna pull the front of this motor off and put that timing chain on it but you might be wondering what does that jet engine sound <laughs> well i got me what i call a torpedo heater you know it's a kerosene heater and they are pretty loud but uh keeping it pretty comfortable in here oh there it is right there you can see glowing uh, keeping it pretty warm in here on the ground where I'm at right now well it's it's a little cool but it's comfortable well <laughs> when you stand up it's like a sauna in here anyway let me get out from under here and we'll we'll start tearing the front of this motor off well I had to turn the heater off I'm telling you it was about to burn me up once I got off the ground <laughs> it is slightly oversized at 100,000 BTU so yeah I had to turn that thing off I could probably, oh, I could probably loosen the belts too, you reckon? Where am I going to put this? It ain't like I got a lot of room here. All right, let's get this power steering off. Got one, two, three voltages. They look like they're about a 917. 917. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, there's one more somewhere. Where shall it be? Is it this one here? I think so. Now why would that be a different size? Somebody explain that to me. Hama, where's my Hama? Well, it seemed to have misplaced. 
my half inch drive three quarter. Well, I got a 25 30 seconds. That's one 30 seconds over three quarter, so it should work. Well, if that ain't something, I might do a little body work. Y'all, y'all watch out. All right, body work complete. Wrong way, wrong way. This is that little collar sleeve that I broke on the uh, 390. Remember when I was trying to get it unstuck? Put my pipe wrench here, broke it. I bought a brand new one on eBay, by the way. Ta-da! I got a headache, yes I do. It's probably from breathing kerosene fumes. Stinks. Well, now, what is the purpose of using two different size bolts? Somebody, somebody answer me that question. <sighs> One of these goes through the water jacket, so I'll have to remember to put some red sealer on this one. Second one down on the left. Y'all remember that? There's just so much dirt and grime right here. I can't even find the bolts. So I had to get my minus screwdriver and get in here and scrape around till I find them. There's one right there. The fuel pump got to come off, so that's good. Might as well go ahead and clean it off then. All right, there is the fuel pump. Got one more bolt. The R she is. All right, now I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't know if this is like shimmy lay and you go dot to dot. I don't know. I'm probably going to go do a little research on that. And I've been told also, do not forget that or you'll have a bad oil leak. So don't let me forget that. Hey, it like to flew out of my hand. Okay, I always wonder if it had a pin. It does. It does. All right. All right, let's just see how sloppy it is. Oh, yeah. Y'all see that right there? Goodness gracious. That's pretty sloppy. Oh, uh, it's, I mean, it really is on the verge of skipping a tooth. Uh, anyway, y'all know I'm a Chevrolet man, not a Ford man. Oh, Chevrolet, you just line it up dot to dot. Uh, so... I'm going to have to study and see how this goes back together. And then we will proceed after that. Well, upon further investigation, the old interwebs told me that this key lines up with a dot on this cam sprocket. Well, there is no dot anywhere on this cam sprocket, but there is a notch and it seems to line up with it. So I'm going to do a little more investigating, but I'm going to say that's, that's what it's got to line up with. So... Let me get all this uh, off, and I gotta clean a bunch of stuff up. Then we'll put it back together, and I believe we may start this thing up tonight. All righty, fellas. I got everything cleaned up, and uh, I'll tell you what, I stuck my whole camera right in this hole a few minutes ago. So this is your lifter valley, push rods and all that. It, it ain't pretty. I'm telling you, it ain't pretty. What we may do, Depending on how this thing acts, so if it, if I got good oil pressure after this, then we might in another video pretty soon pull this intake off, clean all that out real good. Cause I mean it's it's pretty bad. It's it's comparable to the uh, oil paint. It's pretty bad. Anyway, I am getting ready now to put ooh put this uh, back together. So let me get the. Uh, uh, what is it called? Cam sprocket and chain and all that. We'll get that back on. Well, here's something I have learned on this top sprocket, on this cam sprocket. See this right here? That step up. If you have that, you're good. Just make sure you don't have a spacer in here. If this step up ain't here, well, then you got to have this spacer in here. And also, I almost forgot, there's a pin that goes through this and in there. 
So let me pull it out of the old gear before I forget it. Well, we have developed an issue here. Um, this is the pin I pulled out of that other sprocket. And it locates this sprocket on the cam. And it needs to stick out about like that right there. So your fuel pump eccentric will catch it just like that right there. Well, watch this. Ooh, it disappeared. Huh. Well, the issue is this pin is pressed in the old gear. Well, this in here, it just slips back and forth. So you would think the manufacturer of this sprocket would know that. They'd give you a longer pin. No, no sir. So I've either got to make a longer pin or I can shove something in this hole here that is the thickness of this so it'll stick out. So I'll get back to you when I figure out what I'm going to do. Well, here is the solution to this problem. This is the original uh, dial pin. I don't have one longer, but I did have one a little shorter. Well, I just cut off a little piece and then I ground it to size and then shoved it in this hole. Well, then I put my original one in there. Then I get this little fella right here and we put her in the hole just like that right there. And as you can see, I got a little bit sticking out to grab hold of this right here, which is the fuel pump eccentric. Just like that right there. Look at there. Um, then, you know, since that's not pressed in, well, I put me a bigger whoosher on my bolt here to capture that uh, dowel pin where it won't come out. And, you know, if I had three hands, <laughs> I could get that bolt started. Anyway, that's, uh, well, let me get started. I'll just show you. Anyway, as you can see, that pin is now captured and it cannot come out. So, let me pull that back off and get the chain on and, uh, well, we'll just keep on trucking, putting it together. All right, let's get this here feller on this motor. And then we'll um, put the rest of this stuff back on. Ugh. Come on now. There it is right there. You know, that ain't a whole lot better than what I had. What in the devil? Good gracious of mine. Look at that garbage right there. That ain't no better than what I had. I swear. Put her on. I don't care. If the sucker flies apart, well, she just flies apart. That's all I can tell you. I'm going to torque this down to 40 feetage pounds. Come on now. There she goes. All right, I think we'll start putting this thing back together now. Uh, Y'all done seen this movie, so I reckon we'll do a little fast forwarding. Well, we got the front of the motor back on, but I don't think we're going to hear it run tonight. Um, I have had a few unforeseen circumstances occur. One being my heater quit working. Had to work on it for a little while. And uh, anyway, it's getting late, so probably going to wait till tomorrow to finish it up. All we like is putting the Earl pump, Earl pan on, and my radiator. It's supposed to be here tomorrow. 
So, yeah, I believe we'll fire it up unless something major happens. Well, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I should not have said that. Anyway, see y'all tomorrow. Well, it is the next day again. And I've been fighting with my kerosene heater again for the last hour or two. <laughs> Finally got it running. You can see it glowing red there. I'm going to let it warm up in here a little bit. And then I'm going to crawl up under it. We'll put the oil pump on and oil pan and all that. I think I'll just time lapse that too because, well, that's just kind of boring stuff. So let's get busy. pan on and it wasn't too much trouble i had to finagle it around a little bit to get it in but it finally went in uh but here's something uh as i was gathering tools up and putting them on the table over here i noticed something laying over here <laughs> i bet my last bottom dollar my last penny that i own some of y'all know what i forgot <laughs> that right there <laughs> we've been here before ain't we that's the oil pump drive shaft forgot to put it in before i put the oil pump on so, got to pull the distributor and we'll try my little hose trick again. All right, fingers crossed that I can make this work again. Oh yeah, it is working. All right, now what we got to do is stick this piece of brake line down in there. Push down on that whilst I grab my hose, pull it off, hopefully. Oh, it won't come off. What the devil? Oh, there we go. Look at here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me get the distributor back in. And then uh, my radiator just came in. So, perfect timing. We'll put it in. Well, the art is brand spankingly new aluminum radiator. It sure is pretty, ain't it? Way too pretty for this truck. <laughs> Let's get this thing put on. Easy. Easy. I splurged and got a brand spankingly new hose uh, for the bottom here. Let's get that put on. Get on there now. Come on. I'm the devil. Well, apparently that hose is about that much too short. So that's good. Well, I guess I'll put the old one back on for now. And see if I can't find the right one later. All right, let's put some antifreeze in it. Uh, the block is about half full of just straight water. So I'm going to put one gallon of straight antifreeze, and then the next gallon, I'll mix 50-50. Hiya! Ow, my head. That makes about the fifth time in the last 15 minutes that I've hit my head. Oh, wait a minute. I wonder if that pet cock is closed. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, let's get some earls in this son of a gun. All righty, I do believe we're ready to fire this thing up. So let me idle it down a little bit. Give it a little bit of choke. I'm going to open the door because I don't want to die. And then we'll give it the old try. One bow, one bow. Here we go, boys and girls. I do not, I do not understand that. <laughs> Why does it honk so hard?
have to do that. Let me give her a little more timing. I think it may have moved back. y'all look at this right here that's the aero pressure gauge it's halfway up now <laughs> oh yeah i do believe we got that issue fixed and that motor is quiet as a church mouse y'all listen ain't no clickety clacking at all that's pretty doggone good i'm gonna let it sit here and warm up we'll get all that water circulated i'm gonna set the time and i'll probably idle it down a little bit It's been sitting there idling, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes, and it, it sits there and purrs like a kitten. But if you listen real close, you can hear some clickety clacking. Hear that? There's some squeaking in there, too, a little bit. That reminds me of a rocker arm. Um, what it probably is, if you remember, you know, we had a wore out push rod end, and that wore out the rocker arm. Well, that lifter, it probably ain't pumping up like it should and it's giving it a little too much slack and it's wearing out the end of that push rod. And that's probably what's going on. So I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. Eventually, probably gonna pull the top of the motor off the intake and just have a look in there, look at the lifters, pull them out, and may put a new set of lifters in it. If I'm feeling lucky, I may put a cam in it. I don't know, we'll just have to see. Let's go in there and see uh, uh, what the oil pressure's at now that it's all warmed up. Well, the oil pressure has dropped. Uh, which you know I expect it to. I imagine the motors, you know, kind of wore out. Uh, but I'm still happy with that because it's a lot better than what we had, which was zero. I would rev it up and see if the oil pressure would jump up, but I ain't got no gas pedal hooked up, so I can't do that. Well, at least we figured out what was going on with the oil pressure. Uh, that was pretty nasty down in that oil pan. We do have oil pressure now, so that's good. Um, I would take it for a drive, but that clickety clacking. Uh, I don't want to. Um, plus, when you rev it up, there's something reminiscent of rodding off. It may be pistol slap. I don't know. It could be lifters. I don't know. My hearing's going. I'm getting old. Uh, but I do believe we'll probably tear that intake off at least. And let's just look at the lifters, see what we think. Uh, I don't know what we'll do. May pull the motor out rebuild it. Never know around here. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blurp, blurp.